tossing them Jameis references. Always tossing them them Jameis references. All right, let's uh, let's close out today's show on this last topic here. Uh, the Browns apparently tried to get Russell Wilson back in 2018. Now, Chris, and you and so, I talked about this. This was this news. has become a thing recently. I don't know why I saw it pop up yesterday yeah, or this morning. Yeah, it was this maybe. morning. It was this morning, and so, I saw two or three different places shared out. Well, and CBS Sports has like it's their number one trending topic. This. Like it's it's insane. So I remember I remember you and I talking about this. Yeah, and how I thought, and then everyone was like, "Well, that's never going to happen. It's never going to happen." I was like, "Well, if they can't make the trade work, then you just sign him as a free agent because he was going to be a free agent after that. It's when he got paid, got his money after yeah. the year after that, twenty nineteen, four, four year, one hundred and forty million dollar deal." And I thought, well, maybe the Browns can just get him as a free agent. Um, but then the Browns. This is when Baker. they took Baker. I was against the Baker pick when it happened. I was very public about that. And so, yeah. So the Browns had a chance to have Russell. The Browns contend that the trade was discussed conceptually per uh, Pro Football Talk, but acknowledged privately the discussion did indeed happen. The inclusion of a no-trade clause in Wilson's eventual big-money extension with Seattle, in fact, stemmed in part from chatter regarding the potential trade to Cleveland, according to Mike Florio. In 2018, of course, the Browns were still eyeing a franchise quarterback, with the team ultimately using the number one pick on current starter Baker Mayfield. The Seahawks, meanwhile, were coming off their first season without a playoff appearance in six years, and the first and only time Seattle has missed the postseason with Wilson at quarterback. So, both teams didn't make the playoff. Seattle wasn't sure... If he was going to be their franchise guy long term, which was just well, no. See, what Seattle it. was doing was they made a hell of a run with the rookie quarterback on a rookie deal. Yeah, and they were just doing math, thinking, "Do we like building a team this way? Do we think we can replace him? Maybe not with somebody just as good, but but somebody on a rookie deal, and we with, can continue yeah, to on pay. a rookie deal is what is what helped us win those Super Bowls and compete for those Super Bowls." It wasn't the great play of the quarterback. It was the rookie deal. Yeah, because, because we a- were able to build the team the rest of the way out yeah. um, the way we needed to. So it was a math thing for them, and I get it. And, you know, what sucks is is I don't know if Russell would have. If he says now he put a no trade clause in his deal because of the rumblings of this, that means that he would have flown the coop. The Browns would have had him for one year. Yeah. And then – and then it would have he would have been gone. And that's I, I think it's fair to say that like and, and maybe he would have gotten there and loved it, right? That's right. Um, maybe maybe he would have changed his mind once he got there. But I think it's fair to say that like there's not a lot of hope uh, like high profile athletes that want to play in Cleveland. That was LeBron's problem, right? Like there's for whatever reason Cleveland is not exactly looked well upon, right? Uh, okay, is it is it any different than Green Bay or Indianapolis it, or Cincinnati. No, but that, but that's the thing. You have to trade. Who was the last to get... high profile free agent Pittsburgh got? Like the Steelers yeah. are a marquee franchise, and nobody really wants to go play there. Agreed. They're just or really if you good do, at developing in house talent. Yeah, it, or or if they do want to go there, it's just to play. It's at the very yeah. end of their career. Yeah, it's yeah. at the back end of their career, and they don't have a lot of options sometimes at them. But but that even that's a good place to play. I just think these guys want to live in big cities. I yeah. just think they do. And if your town's in a big city, you can be it. Houston's great. Seattle, uh, Seattle's great. Dallas is great. You don't have to just be L.A. and New York. You can be in a big city elsewhere. Atlanta's probably great. Yeah. But yeah. but I, I think I think middle of the country. I mean, no no big-time free agents are going going to, to, to Carolina, okay? Teddy, Bruce, uh, Teddy Bridgewater, come on now. I mean, that's, that's like the biggest signee they've ever had. Uh, interesting part about this CBS article, by the way. Uh, it says it's not hard to suggest this was a case of Cleveland taking a swing at Wilson rather than Seattle looking to unload its quarterback, even with a lucrative contract looming at the time. But Florio said Thursday that some close to the situation still believe the Super Bowl winning cali- or Super Bowl winning signal caller will eventually be traded. With Wilson publicly hinting he wants to play until he's 45, and Seattle on the hook for close to $40 million per year towards the end of his contract, some think it's just a matter of time before the Seahawks move on. Doing so, of course, would rob the team of the biggest and arguably sometimes only 
uh, reason Seattle has been a consistent playoff contender. The 31-year-old Wilson, a seven-time Pro Bowler, has been both remarkably durable and productive for his entire nine-year NFL career, never once missing a start and throwing at least 30 touchdowns in four of his last five seasons. And like Tom Brady, like Aaron Rodgers, you know, d- no talent around him offensively. He's got some. He they they got some new weapons now. They they just got DK Metcalf last year, and that and they doesn't just, count because you have one year of that. They they've got so they signed. Don't give me Tyler Lockett. Don't give me Tyler Lockett. No, I was gonna say they just signed Philip Dorsett. Okay. Oh, so which I mean, it, we'll see. The Patriots cut Philip Dorsett. He couldn't make that shitty roster. No, no, no. He he didn't get cut. It was he had a one year deal with the Patriots last year. He was, but he's been with them for two. They could, and they could they, have signed he, him for another one year. Right, but they they signed him for a three year deal, and then he signed on for another one year deal, and he had the option of signing a one year deal with the Patriots or with the Seahawks, and he went to the Seahawks. That's I'm just telling you, I would have gone with the Seahawks too because the better quarterback. At the end of the day, neither one of them really wanted. They both made him the same offer. Yeah. That's, I, I think you're probably right. I mean, he just right. walked away from a, a terrible team to a, a not terrible team. Philip Dorsett is not a weapon. Yeah. Okay. Chris Carson, good. Chris Carson's not great. Chris Carson's great because Russell Wilson's great. DK Metcalf, pretty good. I think DK Metcalf's the goods. Yeah. I, I that, think he can be really That's the first good. weapon they've ever gone out and gotten him. Well, I mean, they, they got him a running back like Rashad Penny a couple of years ago, but like. And it didn't work out. No, well, no, because I but mean, none, none of them have been good. No, but they like, have what, not gotten any weapons on offense ever. That is, they're, a team they're talking about re-signing that, uh, Marshawn Lynch. Like, a, not good, <laughs> not good. <laughs> uh, McKinnon said, "Got to hop off. See you, gents, tomorrow. Have a good night, War Damn Eagle." Like, get out of here with that Auburn shit, man. Uh, uh, Michael said, "Never been to Cleveland, but haven't heard anything good. Uh, I'm sure it can't be that bad." Cleveland's actually very, very nice. That's a, Downtown me Cleveland that. is so different than it used to be. I started going up to Cleveland, I don't know, about 17 years ago. and um, You married into it. it. It has changed so much in the 17 years that I've been going up there. I can I can imagine. I, like and it. It, I will tell you, downtown Cleveland is really nice. Really, really nice. Not not bullshit nice. Real nice. I don't. I don't think like a lot of these cities. And it's get not bad high reps. end now. Okay, it's not. It's not snooty. Normal people can hang out there and feel normal and cool. See, that's like Memphis gets a really bad rap in the NBA. Yeah. Uh, Memphis is shitty compared to yeah. Yeah, Memphis is. Well, shitty. if you if you're gonna compare it to like Miami and Los nope, Angeles, I'm and stuff not. Like I'm that, comparing it to Cleveland. It's shitty. I'm comparing it to Atlanta. It's shitty uh, because it's not as big. No, but no. but what Bill I'm saying Street is sucks now. Well, it's okay. shitty. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. There are spots in Memphis that are that are nicer. Like I, I like no, Overton not. Square. I like yes, Midtown, but you're not anywhere near those when you're downtown. Well, okay, that's it. true. True, you got a valid point. I'm trying to you stick up for my city a little bit. You got to get a car and drive. You're a tourist. I think that the I, whole area of Cleveland, downtown Cleveland, is big. Okay, yeah, it is four times the size of downtown Memphis easily. Agreed. Maybe five, six times the size of downtown Memphis. Okay, it's big. In the entire area, they got three professional stadiums down there. They've got a theater district, not the Orpheum Theater. They've got a district of seven or eight different theaters. They've got restaurants everywhere. They've got a, a small casino down there. Like, it is nice. It is really nice. Yeah. Memphis ain't got any of that. They, Memphis Nothing. has got the Orpheum Memphis has downtown. One street, and that street has gotten shitty. And then over at Overton Square, they've got uh, the. Uh, Ha- what is it? Not the Halloran. Uh, what's the? I oh, got it. They've got a, They've got two different theaters over there. They've got Ballet Memphis. They got all these different things to do. Like it. They but what Midtown, they what they did to Overton Square. Midtown because no tourists can get there. They they should have built all that stuff that's in Midtown. They should have built it downtown. Yeah, tourists can't get there. So that that would be like me telling you the hi- Cleveland Heights is really nice. Yeah. Cleveland Heights is like the German town for us Memphis folk. I'm getting really local here. It, it, but like people coming from outside, flying into Cleveland, going to a ball game. So there, that's a 45 minute drive away from downtown. Nobody's going there. Yeah. So you can't include that in the nice. You got to tell tourists where to go. All yeah. right. And in Cleveland, you show up and go. And I literally went to a football game. And the day before that, I went to a baseball game. I walked to both of them. And I walked to a bar and a restaurant before and after both of them. Like, it was awesome. Yeah. No, that makes sense. 
That makes sense. Uh, Michael said, my only issue with Cleveland uh, were the bandwagon Mayfield fans in Denver a couple of years ago. Jersey still had wrinkles from being brand new. Like, Well, he's a rookie, so that's yeah. just part of it. I mean, you're going to get new. Everybody's going to go out with a burrow jersey. I don't know if that means they're a bandwagon fan. Those guys are just idiots if they're just believing he's the second coming. Oh, he's absolutely I hope not. he's good. I don't know that he's ever going to be great. I just want him to be good. Yeah, and, and Mayfield, like, remember, he was, like, Joe Burrow is not Baker Mayfield. He's He doesn't have the same attitude. You don't see all the same press clippings and all that. Uh, Baker Mayfield had more in common with Johnny Football than he does with Joe Burrow. Like, I completely so, agree. So that's what Better made football people, player than Johnny, but, but yeah. other than that, yeah. Baker same became mouth. mainstream famous because of his yeah. mouth. Yep. Like, that's all it is. Uh, Jose jumped in and said Metcalf has game. 100% yep. we agree with that. So, no, DK's a stud. But, yeah. And what what would your prediction have been had uh, had Russell Wilson gone to the Browns? Like, would they have been able to I mean, uh, totally make different. Playoff? The whole world would be changed. Our co- coach would be different. Because ba- I'm going to tell you this. Wilson would have come in, and he would have immediately, Hugh Jackson would have been gone. Immediately. He would have went to somebody in the front office and said, we got to get leadership. Leadership's the most important thing. Culture and leadership, we got to change it. They would have hired somebody else. It would have been an outside hire. They would have cleaned house. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know who they would have gotten, but there's no doubt Russell Wilson's going to walk in and he's going to tell the organization, you want to keep me. You have to do some certain that you have to start acting like a professional organization. And these guys aren't it. And you got to get rid of them. Yeah. And, so it's and hard now, to predict how that would have worked. I'm going to tell you this. Russell Wilson, with I don't care who's calling plays. I really don't. With the offense that we had last year, that's a playoff team. That's a 10-11 win team. Talent-wise, 100%. Like the Browns, with, with Russell Wilson at quarterback, that Browns Odell team. Odell Beckham, Landry, and Joku maybe never gets hurt because he doesn't get hung out to dry on a Crazy ass pass. He's got to go up and break his neck on. You got Nick um, Chubb. You got Chubb. Uh, Chubb's uh, the Kareem best Hunt. running back he's ever had. Yeah, they, uh, Marshawn Lynch in his prime was probably pretty good, but he wasn't really in his prime when Russell got there. No, no, no. It was all before Russell. I don't know. Like right when Russell got there, I think like right when he was drafted, I think is when Marshawn Lynch was in his prime. That like, was. was I mean, it, think that's when the whole beast mode Saints thing started. Beast mode game. That was a long time ago. That was like ten years ago. Yeah, but that was in Russell Wilson's. No, no it wasn't. That was Hasselback, wasn't it? That was Hasselback. Russell I'll Wilson just signed his rookie deal last year. At, well, ended his rookie deal and well, signed no, no, a new no. deal. I, I will say this: like Marshawn Lynch, been there four years. Marshawn Lynch in that Super Bowl where they didn't hand the ball to him and whatnot. Like he was, he was still. At pretty, uh, he was still beast mode in name, but he he wasn't great that year. He was okay that year. That's a, you you might have a valid point there. All right, we're going to go and wrap this thing up. Is there anything else we need to talk about today? Nope, let's get out of here. You guys in the comments have been great as usual. As always, go and check out the website. Make sure you are subscribed everywhere. Share out the show. Leave some comments, nice reviews, all that wonderful stuff. We uh, we will be back again tomorrow with all of the what, whatever news that ends up coming out. Uh, oh, hey, before we leave, I, I, had to, I had to read something for you right quick. Uh, I'm glad I remembered this because holy crap. So I watched the, uh, the UFC fights last night, and man, I was... Lord, at that Glover to Share fight last night, uh, and I, you didn't watch it, did you? Nope. All right, so Glover to Share uh, beat the absolute dog crap out of Anthony Smith last night, and let's see, da, 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 da. where was it? All right, so at, first off, here I thought this was really cool. I'm gonna play this and, and let you hear it. Yeah. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna play it, and then I'll tell you what he said. Share saying he's giving up Glover. Oh, have to play job. What? So that's in the middle of the fight. Glover said, uh, sorry, Anthony, it's part of the job. And he said, what? And he said, sorry, part of the job. Smith said, yeah, it is what it is. Look, that fight should have been called two rounds before it was. Like, he beat the crap out of him, and he, he was telling him sorry in there because the ref wouldn't stop the fight. So he just kept having to beat on him. Look, after the fight... These were the injuries that Anthony Smith had last night. Broken nose, broken orbital bone, two missing teeth, and a cut under his right eye. He he lost one tooth in the front and one towards the back. A friggin' molar in the back. His actual real teeth got knocked out in the thing. And Conor McGregor came out and said something about it. He said, uh, he said in the UFC, they keep like a cup of milk over there, like over on the side, for you to put your teeth in afterwards when your teeth get knocked out. Like... 
it was a friggin' beating last night. So, and that's what I felt like on Tuesday night, just so that we toss it out there. <laughs> but anyway, that is going to wrap up the show today. Uh, Michael said, thanks, fellas. Another great show. We appreciate it. As always, we love you guys for jumping in. Uh, as always, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And we'll see you again tomorrow. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show.